Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to be looking at a Rotel and that's the RA-01 so for anyone who, who really loves the R, the Rotel brand what I would always say is that you know they do produce exceptional sound quality so that goes you know for any of these RA series amplifiers and, and the old one is like an entry level but still the, the audio is impressive so in terms of general specification, so power output is 40 watts per channel into 8 ohms, frequency response 10 hertz to 40 kilohertz, with good overall total harmonic distortion at 0.03%. And then for input sensitivity, it does have a moving magnet input circuit, and you can sort of see that from the from the um, from the top shot of the amplifier, just on the right hand side there, where you have the RCA connectors, and that's a 2.5 millivolts, that's standard. And then for all of the other inputs, you're looking at 150 millivolts, again standard. And then you also have a pre-amplifier output connection, so if you want to connect that then to additional amplifiers you can, and that output signal is uh, 1 volt max. And then dimensions, you're looking at 435 by 72 by 342 it does have an headphone socket on the front and then you can also do the tone defeat um, and then the other nice thing is that you have dual speaker outputs so you can select from the front to turn the speaker off you either have a b or both uh, which is a nice feature and then um, in terms of what was the issue with this amplifier well first off when it came in you know you do the initial sort of inspection you're looking just from the top of the board and what you could see is there were multiple fuses that are blown so you have for the speaker output protection circuit you have two times uh, time delay t four amp fuses and then the standard um, 20 millimeter type and then on the power input circuit you have two t5 amp so an attempt must have been made at some point to repair the amplifier and what you found was there was a T3.15 amp in one of them and then in the other one you know it's like 5 amps but as you can see from the top you know, they, they've blown so that tells you that there is some form of short circuit on the board so straightforward what you do is you just remove the bottom service plate and the great thing there is you get full access to the board and then I also then just replace the fuses but I didn't run it up on a dim bulb test or anything like that because I know from experience it's going to be the left or the right channel that has failed. So again, I'll take a picture, you know, on the uh, or the picture of the amp like from the top, and then what you'll then see then is that the left channel had failed. Now the output transistors are uh, Q19 and Q61. So Q61 is a 2SB817 and uh, the other transistor is a 2SD1047 so the 1047 being MPN and the 817 being the PMP and uh, straightforward you know not, nothing complicated here so just a case of replacing the two output transistors and you must use the genuine original type uh, again and I've mentioned this so many times the market is flooded with counterfeit transistors if you buy them and you install them and you think I've got a great price, often they will fail on the initial power up or you'll get a complete unstable output stage and then eventually they will fail then. So you've got to see the genuine original type. And there was also some heat discoloration on the two emitter resistors which are R629 and then uh, the other one is R631. And... Um, the problem there was that you you had that discoloration that told you you know there'd been quite a bit of current pulled through before you know the output stage went short circuit and then what you then have are test points so there's tp1 and then tp2 fundamentally it's connected across the emitted resistor and then what you're looking to do is to set that to an output bias of four millivolts so no input signals connected always say this volume at minimum um, balance treble bass controls all at midpoint just let the amplifier warm up 15 20 minutes nice and stable and then just do that adjustment now the bias potentiometers or bias trimmers are single turn they're not like a multi-turn um, 
as I've said in previous tutorials, you may want to just spray some deoxid onto there with the amplifier turned off. Just rotate the presets back and forth a number of times to clean the track and just return them back to approximately where they were before. And then there's then only a slight adjustment then. And then because of the age of the amp, and uh, I always mention this, you have two relay outputs. So these are 24 volt relays and they are double pole um, single throw. So they don't, and again, if you have like a double pole double throw relay, no issue, you can order those. And when you get them in, just chop off the leads that you're not using. And to avoid any issue with intermittent sound loss due to worn or resistive contacts, you will have gained or, or sort of learnt by now that I just replaced them. I don't want to leave them in there. They do cause issues. By replacing them, puts that longevity back into the repair then. And then the other thing, you know, just scour the board, the solder side for any dry joints. Normally on the Rotel amps, you don't really find any. You know, they are very, very good. And then I also get in there then with deoxid. And I always mention that I'm not promoting it. You know, I don't get any royalties from mentioning deoxid. But um, it is a, a really, really good uh, contact cleaner. So I just put that into the switches and then also into the user controls and just rotate them backwards and forwards and operate the switches multiple times. And you should be rewarded with nice, clean operation then. As with many of the Rotel amps, you've got a lot of uh, vent holes in the top. This one wasn't too bad, but sometimes you will get them where there is a thick layer of dust and you may just get intermittent operation because that dust has fell into some of the input selectors. For example, the one where you switch between tape and source, that's very common, or maybe on the tone control as well. The other part that I want to sort of highlight, and it wasn't sort of major on this amplifier, is the low voltage DC power supply and I'll sort of show that the issue with that side or that part of the circuit is often you get this brown glue again which I've referred to many times before this amp wasn't too bad so there was still elasticity in the glue and there was just a little bit just touching the two zener diodes from the low voltage power supply so just a case of just removing it you know some of the amps do come in it's solidified and it's even in some cases just eaten through the uh, the diode so you just need to replace them so just a bit of sort of longevity mention the word again um, just to make sure that the low voltage power supply there's there's no issues there and then the final thing like many of these uh, repairs you just leave it on test for a period of time you know you hook your scalp up if you want and then just put in a sine wave just make sure that everything is good and um, you know just give it a thorough clean here, not a big job, probably took a few minutes, you know, sort of five or six minutes. And as I said on previous repair videos, I just do a two stage clean. So I do the initial one, normally with a non corrosive like plastic type cleaner, which is great, that fetches off a lot of it. And then I'll just use a, again, again, non abrasive uh, secondary cleaner. And it brings it up, not 100% like brand new, because this is quite an old amp, but you know, reasonable condition then. So, again, not an in-depth repair, sort of strange that since I've been doing these audio tutorials, you know, on previous some of the backdrop videos with the audio, with the description, you used to get some sort of amplifiers that used to take a huge amount of time to sort of, you know, isolate the faults and work through and everything else. Uh, but these tend to be almost like Lego land, but no doubt at some point there'll be another one coming to the workshop, which will probably take me a little bit longer. But uh, yeah, anybody looking to repair Rotel R01, then guess what? It's probably going to be the output stage that's failed. And then just check out the low voltage power supply as well then. All right, so I appreciate you stopping by. As always, if you want, email audio amplifier servicing at AOL.com. And I'll be more than happy then to provide you any more insight or give you advice on how to repair amplifiers, etc. I will be doing another uh, tutorial uh, probably in a few weeks time uh, not connection with the repair but just one of those education type videos so just keep an eye out for that and uh, I always thank you for stopping by and obviously the, the sort of the, the feedback that I get is good and um, we have even like this week fixed quite a number of amplifiers remotely and uh, one of them I think was a Behringer NX series which is great to hear you know from the uh, from the gentleman who repaired it just purely from following along the tutorial and finding that you know one of the diodes had failed in the power supply 
All right, so leave it there. Thank you very much, and uh, I wish you well. Until the next time, cheers. Bye-bye.